Good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Jim Trainer, and today I'm going to be doing a you know, presentation on OSCU withdrawal. This is a very common you know, part of recovery, uh, not a very fun one, and you know, it's something that oftentimes people in early recovery you know, don't know about. They have some things that happen that they're not expecting and it can really make early recovery challenging and it can you know, sometimes really kind of be, be a dangerous you know, contributor to relapse patterns. Um, so, you know, let's, uh, let's begin. Uh, again, we're talking about post skew withdrawal. And what is it? post skew withdrawal is a you know, collection of symptoms. Sometimes it's also called protracted withdrawal. And you know, it is a syndrome that results from you know, some damage to the nervous system that comes about as a result of you know, the relationship between drugs of abuse and the way those interact with the body's, the body's systems for managing stress, uh, for coping with pain, the way that it affects mood. Um, you know, so if you think, for example, of with body the increase in dopamine and you know how that you know, affects you know, euphoria, and then when it's not there as much, you know, you want to crash into depression. Uh, also, you know, a good example of this is uh, the chemical cortisol, which our bodies produce to help us manage stress. You know, one of the things that happens in you know. You know, with, alcohol, with alcoholism, is that alcohol actually does a better job at dealing with stress than cortisol does. And it's found that in alcoholics, you know, the amount of cortisol the body is producing is actually much, much lower than in somebody who's not, you know, not a drinker. And the result is when somebody is getting sober, they have to get used to produce, their bodies have to adjust to producing you know, cortisol all over again. Um, yeah. So, uh, and you know, while that body, while your body's producing that, you still got to deal with life, which you know, makes it, you know, you know, makes it kind of difficult. So, what are some of the symptoms of post acute withdrawal? You know, some things that make things difficult. What are they? So, uh, we have, you know, difficulty thinking clearly, memory problems, you know, Emotionally, being emotionally overreactive, or the alter, or the opposite, being numb, uh, sleep disturbances, you know, physical coordination problems, and being oversensitive to stress. So let's take these in turn. So inability to think clearly. Uh, you know, sometimes this can be described as kind of being in a fog, uh, having some difficulty learning. Uh, you know, especially you know. Very frustrating for somebody who is normally a very intelligent, but a well-educated person. Uh, they're used to being able to do fairly complex tasks, uh, and suddenly, you know, we're working on skills and treatment, and you know, some very simple ideas become really difficult. Uh, you know, or even some you know moderately complex ones that normally would not be hard to grasp. Uh, you know. <coughs> You know, also, you know, problem solving. You know, for example, you know, being able to think abstractly. Uh, you know, these again become very, very difficult. You wind up, you know, you know people who may normally be somewhat open-minded uh, about things, you know, can wind up find themselves being much more, you know, thinking much more rigidly. Um, you know, and just kind of being stuck in more of like a circular logic. You know, this is what I want. Why? Because I want. Uh, and part of what can make this very frustrating for the recovering person is this is not constant. It comes and it goes. This is true for most of the symptoms of post-acute post withdrawal. Um, you know, sometimes we're fine, sometimes we're not, and there's no real rhyme or reason to when they slip in or out. So memory problems. You know, again, short-term memory, uh, <coughs> remembering events, um, you know, information, you know, you may talk about something in group one day, 
you bring it up, you know, the next day, and they, you know, got to do an ad line song. And they're just not, you know, it's like, what, you know, what were you talking about? I don't remember. Um, you know, it may, you know, you know, maybe they weren't paying attention. It may also be they're doing post skew and draw, and they just don't recall. Um, you know, also, you know, the way you may find it is just the short term, you know, short term memory. Um, you know, they're not, you know, they forget to bring their homework in you know, they gave them at the last session. You know, it may not be that they just, they were trying to make an excuse that they didn't do it. Um, it may be they didn't remember. Um, and again, just as in the last slide, learning new skills, learning new information, you know, this contributes to some of that problem. So, you know, emotional overreaction or numbness. Basically, this is reacting out of proportion to a situation. Yeah, so something that would normally make somebody fairly happy, yeah, you know, okay, they're, just, they're just kind of flat. Um, so it may be, you know, might you know, make them you know, kind of sad or you know, whatever. Or the opposite, you know, something okay happens, you know, and you know, all of a sudden they're very, very elevated. Or something that, you know, is a minor thing, um, you know, and you know, they get some bad, you know, they get some bad news, um, you know, that's, you know, not too often, you know, maybe they get a low grade on a test, you know, they're, they're, taking, they're in school at the time, you know, they find they get a, a, you know, B instead of an A, and all of a sudden, you know, they're way, way, de you know, depressed. Um, so sleep, another thing that contributes to this is sleep issues. Um, we know there's a connection between sleep and mood, um, problem solving, all of that. And one of the things that happens with post skew withdrawal is our sleep patterns go haywire. Um, you know, it can be very difficult to fall asleep, it can be very difficult to stay asleep. Um, you know, and also when one's sleeping in this, you know, you know, they can also be having what we call drunk dreams or music dreams, which can be extremely visit, vivid and very disturbing for them. Um, you know, and some of this again, you see the person coming in, they got three hours of sleep the night before, you know, and they just can't explain why. Yeah. Uh, physical coordination problems, somebody who is normally, um, you know, very well coordinated, able to do, you know, some very fine motor you know, skills, um, you know, somebody who may, you know, enjoy playing, but, you know, throwing the ball with the child. And suddenly, these are way harder to do than they're used to. Um, you know, also, you know, something to be cautious about this is reflexes. You know, somebody, you know, somebody in recovery is fortunate enough to still have their driver's license. You know, they may find their reflexes are just, you know, not where they're not what they used to be. And you know, it's a good, you know, thing for the counselor to do is to really, uh, you know, educate them on, you know, you know while we're doing this, you, know, you really need to watch, you know, watch what you're doing on the road is make sure you're being cautious. Um, stress sensitivity, and this is probably the, you know, the number one you know, aspect of post skew withdrawal, is, you know, things that may be minor stressors, you know, you know argument over, you know, forgetting to take the trash out, you know, with your spouse. Um, you know, you know, okay, some stress there. So maybe why if they ha that happens the morning before they come, come in, you know, to group, and suddenly, you know, next thing you know, they're saying they're on the verge of divorce. Yeah. But on the other hand, they can also be missing, you know, they may be downplaying major stressors, they may just, get, just not, you know, being able to recognize them, so if, you know, they're having, you know, if their partner is having difficulty respecting their boundaries, or, you know, if it is really, you know, Creating a lot of tension in the home, you know, <coughs> you know, making it difficult for a person to do the things they need to do to cope with stress. Um, you know, they may be just, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and part of the problem with this is that, you know, stress, post acute withdrawal, you know, creates increased sensitivity to stress, and in the course of that, it feeds on that. The 
more stress you experience, the more stress you're feeling, the more the symptom post acute withdrawal you know, you know, exacerbate. Um, so, obviously, what do we do to manage the symptoms? You know, you know, makes sense. Part of what the big thing we got to do is work on managing stress. Um, and, and part of that also means being able to point and know where the stress is coming from and you know, work on being able to make decisions, you know, good, well thought out decisions to cope with that. So managing post acute withdrawal symptoms. So we have eight you know, you know, key you know, things we need to do. One is stabilization, education, retraining, self-protective behavior, nutrition, exercise, relaxation, spirituality, and balanced living. So let's take those in turn. Stabilization. You know, mostly that means just being able to talk about what's going on. Uh, that means being able to get a reality test. You know, is what I think is happening actually what's happening? Um, you know, that all part of the, the challenge with this being in the recovery also means this means you gotta, gotta reach out and start building some relationships, which can be difficult to do, but you know, you need to do that. You know, being able to find somebody that you can vent to. You know, be it your therapist, your sponsor, um, a friend, you know, the minister, whoever. Um, also working on problem solving, goal setting, being able to kind of think through you know, you know, the goal setting in kind of a more you know, structured way to make sure you're doing it, you know, the, the goals you're setting make sense and that they're actually achievable and they're realistic. Um, Backtracking, you know, things happen, thinking back over, okay, what actually happened? Is it what I think it was? Um, you know, when did it start? What could I have done earlier? <coughs> Education, retraining, obviously learning about addiction, learning about post acute withdrawal. You know, this way you know you're not going. You know, the more you learn about it, the less you feel like you're going nuts. Like, oh, okay, this is what's going on. It's a physical, emotional, biological thing. It's part of what's you know, going on. I'm right on track. You know. <coughs> It will get better. Learning skills, you know, to know how to interrupt and control. Uh, so, so, so stress management skills. We're going to talk about it in a moment. Um, and being able to practice those skills in a safe environment, learning to take, to take things step by step, handle you know, one thing at a time, um, and being able to write down stuff you're writing or little tricks that you can do, um, and asking questions. Um, Self-protective behavior. Post-acute withdrawal is not an excuse for withdrawal. Or excuse me, not, it's not an excuse for relapse. Yeah. Once a person's aware of this, they're responsible for making sure that they do what they've got to do to keep themselves you know, safe and sober. <coughs> Part of what they have to do is be able to be conscious of the stress triggers and learn behaviors that protect themselves. You know, you know, if the, the source of stress is the relationship, how do we work on setting boundaries in that? You know, do we need, need to take some time, some time apart, to make sure we're in a safe place before coming back? Human um, <coughs> you know, nutrition. You know, our bodies require fuel, and you know, stress you know, feeds off of that. Our body you know, stress is you know, taxing on the body, and we need to make sure we're getting enough you know, good. Food protein, you know, it's, um, you know, vitamins, you know, not just kind of the carbs, <coughs> fat, you, know, you know, the fats, you know, you know, ice cream is great, but you, know, you need to have some salad in there too. Um, and, you know, as well as you know, some fish, meat, or vegetarian, and making sure that you're aware that you're getting enough protein. Um, you know, something that, <coughs> excuse me, something that needs to be avoided, you know, are sweets, caffeine, you know, which um, you know, can come counter to the culture in many, you know, 12-step programs, but at least being aware, okay, how much caffeine am I taking in? Uh, you know, a very smart thing to do, you know, that I always encourage people in early recovery to do is, you know, talk to a doctor, talk to them, you know, see if they're getting a chance to sit down with a nutritionist and see what you can do to plan out a healthy diet. Um, exercise, you know, you know, many of us find exercise is a great resource for getting rid of, you know, stress, for being in the COVID, um, you know, in 
want to make sure you're doing it in moderation, so you you know, so you're not doing something that's going to cause an injury, um, <clears throat> you know, or suddenly becoming way competitive about it. You know, it's supposed to be something that's relaxing, calming. Um, you know, and you know, one thing that's very important: find something that's fun, find something that you enjoy. And again, you know, make sure you're talking with the doctor. Make sure that you know you're, what you're doing. We plan on doing it's going to be safe for you. Relaxation. Yeah. You know, you know, being able to you know, do some things just to calm down, just to slow yourself down. Um, you know, some of the things, you know, just meditating, which can be as simple as just sitting, you know, and just, you know, th you know just thinking about your breathing, you know, or just kind of focusing on, you know, just kind of sitting, just kind of being, just kind of getting pretty, very calm. Uh, yeah, there's some great resources out there, resources out there to help learn that. Um, you know, some relaxation tapes, meditation tapes, um, lots of stuff that's available on the internet. Um, also, listening to music oftentimes is very helpful to people. Um, if you happen to be a musician, playing your instrument, um, reading, um, playing, just going out, just doing something for fun. You know, going out, you know, throwing a ball around with a child, you know, or you know, getting together with some people on, on the weekend, just tossing a frisbee. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the important thing is it's whatever works for you, and it's keeping you safe and sober. Spirituality, great definition. For spirituality, you know, is you know, you know, you have a very active relationship with a power greater than yourself that gives your life meaning. I like the emphasis on relationship. You know, uh, you know, believe in a higher, you know, belief in a higher power. And what does that do? You know, it's not, you know, just like, oh, okay, you know, it's a you know, transcendental God thing. Uh, you know, depending upon your, you know, your perspective. You know, some people that works for, some people, you know, have a little harder time with that. Uh, what it does is, you know, it takes you out of the center. Suddenly, it is not all about you. And the other thing is, you know, it, you know, takes you some, you know, peace of mind, awareness, you know, you know, you know awareness that you're limited. And it's not only is it not all about you, it's not all up to you. you know, there's something else operating. And you're recognizing that there are more things going on around you, there are more influences around you and around other people that you can actually control really just, you know, part of what we have to learn to do in recovery is to let go of some of that. You know, a great resource for that is 12-step programs. You know, 12 step programs, after you get past the first couple of steps, after you get, you know, you know more involved with it, you know, 12 step programs, you know, are a very, you know, strong spiritual focus. And, you know, can follow if you are religious or have, you know, um, a background in spiritual practice, you know, really, you know, taking it, you know, seeing what they're, seeing what resources they have, what works for you. And balance lift. You know, you know that, can we talk about, you know, just you know, being able to realize, you know, that your life is more than one thing, that there's more going on with you, you know, Ourselves, then you know, getting sober. There's more to getting sober than just going to meetings and just going to treatment. You know, there's the rest of our life that's happening as well. You know, not ignoring our family, or our kids. Not ignoring our partner. Not uh, you know, making sure that we are you know, in, in, enjoying things that we enjoy. Um, you know, and you know, also you know. Remembering that there are things that are good, even though we're struggling, and people may be struggling in early recovery, they still have things that you're good at. Yeah. And really kind of remember that and do some of that. Yeah. Um, you know, get part of that remembering that building that self confidence you know, and feeling good about yourself. You know, one of the key things to remember is that, yeah, early sobriety is a rough, rough time. But, you know, Get through it. You know, those changes that are happening in the body, 
you know, things through, you know, eventually, you know, they balance out. And, you know, things start to make sense. Some people it happens quickly, more quickly, some people it happens more slowly. You know, dealing with stress, you know, is a big part of being able to manage that. Um, you know, but also just kind of get, being able to just, just recognize it's gonna, it's gonna get better. Just you know, as, they, as they say in the rooms, you know, don't quit before the miracle happens. Okay. So thank you, and I hope this was you know, useful. I hope uh, you know, you know, this is you know, something that was enjoyable. Thank you.